All right, good morning. Um, we've got a pretty small class today. Uh, let's see, we've got so Deshaun, Gavin, right? uh, Amani, and Mike. And then Ezekiel, you're online. Maybe. All right, great. Um, so what we're going to do today, um, if you remember last week, I told you I'm going to start each class period with an icebreaker just to kind of get you all to feel like it's okay to talk. Uh, so this week, um, if you had to get rid of one genre of music that would never be played again, what would it be? Country. Country music, all right. Oh, I forgot to say, this is great, and I love country music. I'm just kidding. I, I actually used to love country music. I don't really listen to a bunch anymore. But, uh, for me, it would be uh, probably like heavy metal, uh, like like the real heavy scream stuff. Not really a fan, so I'll probably get rid of it. Who's next? I was going to say country. Yeah. Metal works, too. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I would probably be like last week. Okay. Yeah. I'd probably say like jazz or something. Okay. Uh, probably like the screen. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, so today, um, you're supposed to have this paper. Oh, well, first, let me go over a few announcements. Um, uh, just to kind of show you. Uh, this week, so you know what I'm expecting. Uh, if you go to Blackboard and you go to Module 1, right, you'll see what we did the last two weeks. And now if you scroll down, you have Week 3. Okay? And this is how each week after next week, you'll scroll down and you'll have Week 4. Okay, So for this week, you're supposed to draw a picture of God um, just to bring to class. Uh, watch the videos on the Trinity. And those are there's three short videos that you can scroll down and watch. Um, and then your reading for this week is the Gospel of John, so that's in the Bible. Um, if, you, if you have a Bible or you look it up online, you go to the Book of John, um, and it's to be to be clear, if you don't have much, um, if you haven't read the Bible too much, which is okay. Um, there's a Gospel of John, and then there's a letter of like First John, Second John, Third John. Uh, we're going to be this semester reading the Gospel of John. Okay, so it's at the start of the New Testament, if you look at the Bible and you just type John chapter 1, it'll bring it up. Um, but the first chapter of John, and then in your textbook, the reading for this week is in a faith called Christianity, uh, chapters 1, 2, and 5. Okay, uh, Each week there will be um, anywhere from, I don't know, two to four chapters to read. Um, and they kind of will go along with the themes of what we're learning. And they'll kind of fill out what I don't get to. So that's your reading for the week. And then you need to post on the discussion board by February 7th, which is Sunday at midnight. Okay? So Sunday by midnight, you have to post on the discussion board. Again, uh, there's a couple ways to get to the discussion board. So you have your videos here you're supposed to watch. And then you have a link to the discussion board. And again, the discussion board tells you how long it's supposed to be. So it's supposed to be 200 words. You don't have to reply to any classmates. You just have to make one initial post by February 7th answering these three questions. And so you can either click this link here and click that link and hit create thread up here at the top. Or you can go here on the side and you can go to the discussion board and you'll see week three discussion board. And just click that and then hit create thread. Okay, so do we have any questions about kind of what I'm asking for you this week? And then I have a reminder down here at the bottom. Your first major assignment, What in the World Assignment Part 1, is due February 14th, which is a week from Sunday. It's 10% of your entire grade, and it's over the first half of this book right here. Okay? Um, and I'm going to pull that up and go over that one more time with you all, um, partly because I have to use this lecture for Monday's class because they canceled. And 
Nobody really told me, so it was too late to do for me to do anything. So I'm just gonna post this lecture. But I'm gonna pull up so you can click on if you go to your assignments tab over here, you can go to your assignments tab, you'll see what in the world assignment. You can click this link and it'll pull up the instructions. All right, so what in the world assignment part one is due a week from Sunday. You're supposed to read chapters one through nine um, in this book right here. If you're having trouble getting this book for whatever reason, doesn't matter, just let me know. I think I have an, I have an extra copy so somebody can borrow this. Um, I don't mind to help anybody out if, if you don't need it because you need this book to do this assignment. Um, and essentially what you'll do is, as you see down here, chapter one, you will tell me, uh, chapter one will have questions, chapter two will have questions, and you'll just type them up. Question, answer, question, answer. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward. Some of these are reflective, like just tell me what you think. Honestly, even if you don't read the book, you can answer some of them. Um, but other of, others will be like, you have to read the book to know the answer. So um, to do by February 14th, you just kind of put the question, put the answer, uh, and so you do through chapter 9. All right, and there's nine, nine chapters. Um, the rubric, it's total 50 points here. This is how I will grade. There's a point and a half for each question. Did you do it? Did you answer it correctly? Um, did you put thought into it? So there's 28 total questions. That's 42 points. Uh, three points for hitting the page requirement. It needs to be at least four pages long. Four points for grammar. Um, if you have a lot of grammar mistakes, I'll take some off. And then one point just for following the directions for format and citation. Now, just a reminder, I told you this last week, your citations, you don't really have to do like a works cited page or MLA, I don't care about that um, because I know you're using this book. Okay? You're not using a lot of resources, you're only using what in the world am I doing here. But if you go to quote something from this book, make sure at the end in parentheses you put, um, you can either just put 12, like if you got it on page 12 or you can put page 12 and just put it in parentheses after the cloak so I know where you got it. Okay. Um, is there any questions about this? Because it's due in about a week and a half. Okay. Um, uh, any questions about uh, what I want from you this week? So the seventh is just the discussion board. Yeah. Usually I have it put. Yeah. So here, um, your discussion board is due by February seventh. Okay. Discussion board February seventh. I just went ahead and put this in here in case you wanted to start working on this. This isn't due though until February fourteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As soon as you get it done, you can just, the way you turn it into is you just go to assignments, go to assignments, you can click on this big bold part right here, and then you will attach it. So you can uh, browse local files, and that's where you will attach your, um, where you attach your paper from, from wherever you have it, okay? All right, if nothing else, let's go ahead and kind of get to today's stuff. All right, picture of God. Um, so why don't you go ahead and show off your, your artist skills and kind of tell me why you drew what you drew. I didn't really try to draw like a picture of God or like what Jesus looked like as a person. So I kind of just drew me and then like a hand over me. Okay. And the hand basically just represents God's hand and it's like he's always with me and he's a plan for my life and he'll be with me through everything. Cool. Good. Yeah. Uh, I just drew a cross 
Okay. It's a pretty good, like, symbol of yeah. God. And, and just because I feel like I draw an actual picture of them, it's just, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't work. Yeah, good. I just drew an arrow pointing up because all good things come from above, and he's the only higher power. Okay. All right. I kind of do like Jesus, but it was kind of bad with light around it. Oh, that's fine. Okay. There's like so many controversies on what God looks like and stuff like that. So yeah. So be right go on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Ezekiel, I don't know if if you drew a picture, did you? If not, I won't hold it against you. No. Uh, yeah, I did. It wasn't. It wasn't too good, but it was. <laughs> I'm not an artist, um, but I try my best. Okay, all right, that's fair. Well, one of the reasons I um, wanted you all to do that this week was because um, this week we're going to kind of start with God. Um, when we're talking about Christian faith um, and the Christian foundation, we're going to have to talk about first um, who is God. Um, and so we're really going to try to get into a little bit today the characteristics of God because a lot of you, I think, drew things that because we really don't know what God looked like. Um, we kind of understand what Jesus looked like, that he was probably darker skinned, um, that he would have been, you know, a darker skinned man. But even that's all we all we really know, even about Jesus, even though... In America, you see white Jesus all the time. <laughs> Historically, that's not what Jesus looked like. But we really don't know. So, But what it seems like most of you all did is you use characteristics of who you've heard about who God is um, to kind of make your picture. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to look at who God is. Now, when we start talking about who God is, we have to start with the Trinity. Okay? The Trinity. And the Trinity is who is God, but it is in three persons. So you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Trinity is one of your key terms for this um, module. So Trinity is the idea of one God. In three persons. One God and three persons. And this is one of the things that I think sometimes can be very, very confusing about the Christian faith. Because how can the idea of the Trinity is that these three are all distinct. Right? They're all different. But they're all also God. Right? They're, that there's only one God but that the one God is in three persons. And how that exactly works kind of seems quite confusing and almost like it's illogical. It doesn't make sense. Like how, how can they be all the same and at the same time 100% different? Um, I know as I was growing up, um, I kind of had to always think of it in a couple different ways. One of the main ways that I kind of got through it to kind of understand the Trinity is the idea that of H2O. Right? H2O has three different forms, uh, liquid, solid, and gas. Um, now, they are distinct, as in they are different, but at the core of what they are, they are all H2O. And in the same way, God, and it's not a perfect example, but these three are distinct. God the Father is different from God the Son. God the Son is different from the Holy Spirit, but they are God. I think another way to think about it, um, and I'll kind of explain one of those videos if you haven't got a chance to, to, to watch it yet. Um, the idea of the Trinity, it kind of makes the statement that it's not illogical. It's just hard for us to fathom. Right? It's just hard for us to imagine how can there be one being with three personhoods. Right? Because what, the way we exist in our reality Unless you have multiple personality disorder, and that's because you're crazy, right? You you have mental um, unhealthiness, right? But in our reality, if there's one being, you have one person, right? You are one being, you are one person, right? So this idea that how could God be one being and at the same time 
to be three persons. Uh, it doesn't quite make sense, but one of the videos says it's not necessarily illogical, it's just unfathomable. And the way he makes this point is talking about a cube, okay? Um, everybody know what a cube is, right? It's all right angles, all the same length. You all know what a cube is. Now for a second, let's pretend we have a friend here, right? This will be Bob, right? Bob's our friend. Bob, though, is two-dimensional. We are three-dimensional, right? Bob can't experience the same thing we can experience. But as we were all kids at some point, right, you kind of draw a cube this way, right? Bob can see a cube, right? But this is actually not exactly a cube. It's really just a shadow of a cube, right? Because no matter how perfectly you draw this, you don't have all right angles. You don't have all like vertices the same length, even if I drew it straighter, right? It's not exactly a cube. It's really just a shadow because a cube is three dimensional. Um, and now Bob can, can kind of understand what a cube is, but he can't quite grasp what a cube is. Why? Because he's two dimensional and we're three dimensional. At the same time, um, does anybody know what a Tesseract is? And not the, uh, not Avengers necessarily. But a tesseract or a hypercube is in geometry, it's a four-dimensional cube. Uh, it's a cube, I pulled up a picture, but I showed off the, oh, I thought I did, maybe I didn't. Oh, here it is. All right, so it's a, it's a tesseract, it's a four-dimensional cube, and it looks something like this, like a cube within a cube. And mathematically, and in geometry, and through uh, philosophy and science, we can say that this thing should exist. But similar to Bob of how he can only see a shadow, we don't really know what a tesseract would look like. This is like basically Bob's cube. This is our tesseract because we're stuck in three dimensions. right? We don't have four dimensions, so we can't comprehend exactly what a tesseract would look like. Now, if you're confused, don't be. Here's the point. The point is just because something is unfathomable or just because you can't imagine something doesn't mean it's also illogical. Okay. And so with God, God is so much greater and above. And this is again, the Christian perspective that just because we can't fathom exactly what the Trinity is, we can still see shadows of it. We can still try to understand it the best we can. And we can say that actually it is logical. It's just kind of hard to fathom. Does that kind of make sense? Any questions that you've ever had on the Trinity? I don't. I could go into more detail here, but I'll leave that up to your videos this week. Any questions on the Trinity? Right, the main thing to remember about the Trinity is that it's one God in three persons. This is why this is important. Because in the Christian faith, the Christian faith is monotheistic. Right? And monotheism is one of your key terms this semester. Monotheism, mono meaning one, theist, uh, belief in God. So what this is is belief in one God. Belief in one God. The opposite of monotheism is polytheism. Poly meaning many, so belief in many gods. The Christian faith at its heart is monotheistic and is a principle that goes all the way back to the beginning of the Bible that there is a belief in one God, but that one God is Trinitarian in three persons. Okay, monotheism, belief in one God, polytheism, belief in many gods. This would religions that fall into polytheism would be like Hinduism, um, like ancient. Greek or Roman 
uh, gods, right? And there's there's many more. Monotheism is not only Christianity but Islam and um, Jew, the Jewish religion. But the Christian faith is monotheistic. One God, three persons. Any questions? Okay. Now let's talk about more characteristics of this one God. All right, so ask the question, who is God? All right, one, we know he's, a tr he's Trinitarian. Trinitarian. Two, uh, these next three are going to be our omni words. So we have, these are on your key term list as well, omnipresent. Number three, omnipotent. And number four, omniscient. Something you'll learn about me is I'm a terrible speller. Um, make sure I spell this one correctly. All right, God is, in the Christian faith, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient. All right, this word omni means all, or every, all. Okay, so omnipresent means kind of all places, or all time. What we believe in the Christian faith about God is that he is not, a better way to put it, not bound by location or time. He is not bound by location or time. What that means is in the Christian faith, we believe that God could be here. God could be in Africa and Asia and New York and California and Canada all at the same time whenever he wants to be. Right? So that God is bigger than places, that God can be anywhere he wants, um, anytime he wants. At the same time, this goes a little bit deeper with that, that God is always, another way to think of this is always present. Always present, which means that God is present in the past, he's present in the present, and he's also present in the future. The Christian belief about God is that God is not only bigger than time, but he is the creator of time. So that means God can kind of exist outside of time. And as soon as you start to think about what it means to be outside of time, it kind of will throw your mind for a little bit of a loop. But what we understand about God is that he, um, he's in the past, he's in the future, because he is greater than time, that he is not bound by time. He's not bound. We're, we're in this linear direction where we're here today. Then tomorrow, then the next day, it's like that. God, it's not the same. Um, that he is not bound by location or time. Omnipresent. Number three, omnipotent. This means all-powerful. God is all-powerful. There is nothing that he can't do. Um, there is nothing he is too weak for or couldn't accomplish, God can do what he wants. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. And then finally, we have omniscient. God is all-knowing. God is the creator of knowledge, so he can't, he can't like, trick God. Or God, it's not like God could learn something new because God already knows. God is the source of knowledge, so he is uh, all-knowing. All right, so now looking at these, I want to ask a question. If these are true, right, God is all places, all time, God is all powerful, God is all knowing, especially these two at the bottom. Here's a fun little question to think about. Could God create a rock that he couldn't lift? Because if he's all knowing, he should be able to create this rock. But if he's all powerful, he should be able to lift the rock. Could God create a rock 
but he couldn't lift. Any thoughts? No, I think it's good. Yeah, okay. I think they kind of cancel each other out. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Yeah, it really is more just a. There's this uh, theologian, great theologian and thinker um, named Thomas Aquinas, and he dealt a lot with the attributes of God. So, like these omni words and like who God is. Uh, and he was back like in the 1200s, I believe. Um, but he said those kind of things are kind of philosophical and kind of kind of waste our time a little bit because what these words do is kind of give us the words for our human understanding to understand God. But at the same time, God is so much greater, kind of like the cube thing in the Trinitarian. Like we can understand God to our human ability, but we can't fully grasp who he is. And so asking questions like, could God lift a rock that he couldn't move to say he's either not all-knowing or he's not all-powerful is kind of just a waste of time that just kind of brings God on our human level instead of recognizing that these just help describe who God is. And it's kind of more of a shadow than maybe fully understanding who God is because he is so much greater. And so really he says that that, those kind of questions that people will ask to kind of because people will say those kind of things to discredit God. They'll say there's no way something could be omnipotent and omniscient. You made a rock that you couldn't lift would either mean you're not this or you're not this. Um, and he just says it's kind of a waste of time. Um, it kind of just brings God to our level instead of viewing God as these things. Okay. So in the Christian faith, though, we believe God is Trinitarian. We believe he is omnipresent. He's all places, all time. He's omnipotent, he's all-powerful, and he's omniscient, he is all-knowing. Any questions about these? All right, we will keep going here. All right. Four characteristics. That was four. Let's do five. Now, I'm not going to be able to give you a comprehensive list of who God is, uh, but we're just going to hit a few of them today. Number five, we have God. Who is God? God is holy. I'm going to kind of combine one here. God is holy. And God is perfect. God is holy and God is perfect. This word holy means set apart. Set apart. In the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 6, verse 3 in the Old Testament, um, there's this scene where, where God is surrounded by uh, seraphim, which were kind of like they're kind of like high angels. And they're singing around him and they're saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of the hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And what they're saying here is God is holy. Now Isaiah comes in the Old Testament, which is Hebrew writing, which was written a long time ago. And a long time ago, they didn't waste words. So anytime you see a repetition of words, like so in that scripture, you see holy, holy, holy. Uh, you kind of need to take note um, because they didn't have like a lot of paper. Um, <laughs> right. They didn't have like computers and typing things. Right. So they were they had very limited writing. And so to repeat is trying to emphasize, similar to how they didn't use punctuation either, but it'd be similar, like you were trying to say, how is God holy? God is holy, 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 right? That God is so holy, they're trying to emphasize that he's not just set apart, but he is, he is in a different league, right? That God is so holy, he is so perfect compared to who humans are. God is holy and God is perfect. God has no imperfections. He is good and just. 
God is holy. God is perfect. He doesn't mess up what he does is holy. All right, number six. And this is a big one. Who is God? God is love. One of my favorite things about God, it's not that God just gives love. It's not just that God created love. But in fact, God himself is love. God is love. And what we know about God's love is that it is pure. It is sacrificial. It is um, unearned. It is undeserved. It is given freely. It never ends. Right? If you if you think about the love we know, like the love between people, love between um, maybe a romantic partner or a best friend, or you look at the kind of love we as humans, and then we look at kind of these things, it seems like oftentimes ours <laughs> falls a little short. Um, and so the question that I kind of think about is we're thinking about God's love here. How is our love different than the love of God? Like, so if we're, if we're just taking the Christian view and we're taking these things as true, whether you agree or not, right? How is... Mine and your love, humanity's love, different. Yeah, yeah. Situational. A lot of times we have to earn love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it ends. Anybody else? I think you guys are right. And I don't know about you, but like I'm not perfect. Sometimes my love's not very sacrificial. Sometimes it's selfish. Um, it's not always pure. It's kind of self motivated, right? It's for me. And I, and I don't know about you, but a lot of times I love people. Why? Like you think about the people in your life. A lot of times you love them. Like you have friends. Why? Because they make you laugh, or because you have good chemistry with them, or you find somebody attractive. Or uh, maybe it's like you love your boss. Why do you love your boss? Because they give you a job and they give you money, right? Or maybe you love somebody because they give you purchase. And, and I don't think those things are all necessarily bad. But it's what makes God's love different is that it's given freely. We can't earn it because we've all kind of fall short of this, right? We fall short of God's perfection. And so it's, it, God's love isn't something that can be earned, but it's given freely. And it never ends. I think this is also another big one which you guys mentioned. Because, right, if you think about humanity's love, you cross me once, that's okay. You cross me two, twice, I might be able to forgive you. You cross me three times, we're probably hanging on a problem. Right? It's, it, it probably doesn't take people too long to say, you know what, my love's going to end. Or how I care about you or how I treat you is going to effectively um, be different. Um, so yeah, God's love is way different, and this is the thing that actually draws me to Christianity. Um, when I read this story right here, from beginning to end, which I've only read it probably once, beginning to end, um, I've read lots of parts of it many times, and the thing that gets me over and over is this thing right here. Um, from the very beginning, God showed his love in creating us, and then through the entire book, he's trying to redeem us and bring us back to him. And his love is ultimately shown through Jesus, the Son, a part of the Trinity, which we'll talk about here in a couple weeks. But God's love is just so different and so um, attractive that this is a big thing that draws me to Christianity. All right, number seven. Who is God? God is... Relational. God is relational. We see this in, uh, it's evident in the Trinity. So God has perfect union together. 
All right, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we see that God is relational even outside of humanity. Within himself, there is perfect unity between the three and perfect relationship. So God is relational. He is relational within the Trinity. He is also relational with humanity. As I was just talking, this story, what this, what this book tells is a story of a God that created humanity. Why? To be in relationship with, to um, the Garden of Eden, which we'll talk about next week. God created humanity so he could walk with them, so he could know them. And there could be this relationship between God and his creation. Creation, uh, humans kind of broke that trust. And the rest of the Bible is about God rebuilding this relationship with humanity. God is relational. All right, so the next question I want to ask you, um, what characteristic of God, and this doesn't necessarily have to be one we talked about here, it could be one, the, the book goes into a few more in a little bit farther detail, but what characteristics of God do you find most appealing, uh, most interesting, or on the opposite end, that you maybe don't agree with or think differently of? What characteristics of God do you find most appealing or more, most interesting? Or any. Kind of up to you. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, I think because I think thinking about this, it seems to be a dichotomy where we where there's this like big view of God where He is like like out in stars somewhere, you know, or and He like created everything, um, and really finding the the middle ground between God is really big, but also God is personal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like the hope and faith thing, where like people are really sensitive to almost like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing that sometimes it is what keeps me going. Is like I've had you know sometimes in my life that have been really difficult, um, and I don't know where I would be if I didn't have you know somebody that you know I believe has my back. Uh, and that's why I've always believed about Christianity, but despite how many times I've messed up or, you know, my love doesn't look like this or, you know, I fail people um, to have a God that says, I still love you and I'm still there for you, um, truly just changed my life. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that also sticks out to me is how omnipresent and everywhere at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else stick out to you all? That's what I actually have written down. I think one of my favorite ones, um, this kind of gets back to you, Kevin, is is this one. Um so as a kid for a long time, it I, it, it I had trouble finding God as a personal God, and then um, just when, as my faith grew and my my belief in Jesus grew, viewing God as this God that while He's really big and while I can stand under the stars and feel so small, to realize that that God that created cared about me was just kind of life changing, and this relational aspect. I think is one of the biggest things that I see about God. And one of the things that in some other religions is exist, but there's plenty of religions that God is out doing his own thing. Um, and he's bigger and more powerful. And you kind of have to earn your way, like as long as you're good enough and you can do enough right things. But what's different about Christianity is Christianity says there is that God out there. He is powerful, but he looks at us and he loves us and wants to be in relationship with us, that he wants to know who we are and 
and wants us to know him. So this relational aspect, I think, is really powerful. And I think it's evident, too, in humanity as in we are people that live because of relationships. Right? If you just think about humans, we need relationships to thrive. I think we really saw this this last year in the pandemic. Right? The pandemic kind of pulled people out of relationship or out of community where you can only do certain things and you had to kind of be locked down. And right, we saw the side effects, right? Suicide rates went up and depression went up. And yeah, right? All these other things went up. Why? Because we, we kind of fall out of relationship. And I think one of our needs as humans is to be relational. And I believe that is because we were made by a relational God. Because God is relational, he created humans to be the same. And next week, you'll kind of read the creation story in Genesis. And God creates Adam. And he looks and says, this is not good. It's not good for man to be alone. And then he creates Eve. So I'm always drawn to these two. And they kind of go hand in hand. That's really what draws me to, to God and to Christianity itself. But any other comments? Any um any other things you've heard about God that you think are interesting, that you think um, are appealing, or even on the opposite end, that, that give you pause? All right. Because um, that's one thing I want to... Um, Make sure you all know in this class, don't feel like you have to always agree with me. Um, I'm not the final say on everything Christian related, and you don't even have to, to believe Christian things um, to discuss in here. Um, no, that's okay to discuss. Uh, and honestly, we probably all can learn from different perspectives. So, so don't feel like you always have to agree with what is said in here, but know that... Um, that whatever you do believe is is welcomed in here and that you can kind of talk freely with it. Okay. All right, we in class in about five minutes. So let me make sure this is all I have for today. So um oh yes, I have one more announcement to talk about. Um go ahead and erase this, but if you, last, so last week I told you about this opportunity to do what is known as Campus Alpha, to get out of the final. Um, so this is in your syllabus, but the way it's going to work this year, I got an email about it. It's going to start Tuesday night at 6.30. It's going to start Tuesday night at 6.30 over in the Hodge building. So Tuesday night, so Alpha. is Tuesday nights at 6.30 in the Hodge if you attend Alpha this semester Tuesday nights at 6.30 it'll be every week um, for a week something like that but if you attend you can get out of your final, okay? The way this will happen though, there will be a sign-in sheet. So one, you have to sign in. Two, you cannot miss more than two, unexcused. And three, you have to write a short paragraph over the topic. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the way this will work, um, each Tuesday night at 6 30, you go to the Hodge building. I think the way Alpha is set up, you kind of watch a video and then you'll probably break into smaller groups and kind of just discuss it. You know, I don't care if you just go and don't say anything. Um, but the thing you have to do is you have to sign in. 
you can't miss more than two unexcused. And three, uh, after after each week, you can either get them all together and send them to me at the very end, or you can just send them to me each week. You'll email me. So you email me to Harding D at Lindsay. You'll email me. I don't even care if it's just three or four sentences, but telling me what it was about, what you guys talked about, what was the video about, telling me the topic. Do that each week. If you do this, you get an A, 100% on your final. Okay, your final is. How many times How many times have to go? How many times is it? At least eight, right? You know, I don't know. I, I'll still check. So sometimes they usually. I don't know how many weeks it's going to be. It might be 10 weeks or it might be 12 weeks. And so it will be um, through the majority of the semester on Tuesday nights at 630. Um, and after I kind of find that out, if for whatever reason, I, I'll kind of give you, but I'll give you a more definite answer of how many you have to go to after I talk to the guy to, to figure out how many is total. But really, you're only allowed to miss two unexcused. All right, so if you start showing up to this and then you end up missing three, then you just have to take your final. Okay. Um, it starts next Tuesday at uh, 6 30. The Hodge building is just this building right over here. Yeah. So just the building on the other side over here is the Hodge building. Any other questions about this? It's pretty quick. I think it probably only lasts an hour, would be my guess. Uh, um, I think then we went into small groups for 20 minutes. Um, make sure, they did tell me to make sure and let everybody know that it is, you do have to wear a mask and there will be social distancing, but that's the only thing we All right, and I know, so I know the syllabus kind of says um, as soon as you start missing, it'll affect your final grade. But the way I'm going to do it, as long as you have uh, two or less unexcused absences, then you'll get your full credit. All right, and your final is 15% of your total grade, so it's a good boost just to count that if, you want, if you're interested. All right, any questions? All right. That will be class today. I will see you all next week. Uh, if you want to. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I emailed you back this morning. Um, and uh, 